नमस्ते ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यूएचवी 3 मॉड्यूल 1 द इंट्रोडक्टरी मॉड्यूल एंड वी स्टार्टेड विद लेक्चर 3 यस्टरडे सो जस्ट टू ब्रीफली रीकैप रीकैप of the recap what we did yesterday can we go to the next slide yeah uh next slide so we were talking about what we did in uhb2 and we said that we found that our basic aspiration is for continuity of happiness even though our desires may seem very varied at the root of it we all want to be happy we all want prosperity and we also saw in uhv2 how this continuity of happiness can be ensured in us it can be ensured when we are living in human consciousness that is when we have right understanding right feeling and physical facility all three when we pay attention to all three when our focus is on all three when we have the understanding within the self and with that we understand relationships therefore we have the right feeling in relationship and we have physical facility with that we can have continuity of happiness within us so this transformation from animal consciousness or in human consciousness to human consciousness can be done or can happen through education and sanskar our human education and working on the sanskars how we live according to it and once we do that then there is justice and order in the society and with that it can the ultimate goal is to have an undivided society and a universal human order next slide so that is we can see this in this diagram here you know the lower the red part the red block animal consciousness or in human consciousness would be a state where the focus is only on that circle the red circle with the blue box physical facility if that is our focus and our focus is not at all on right understanding or on relationship we are going to end up getting trying to accumulate more and more and more physical facility but due to lack of understanding we don't know how much is required for us so we keep thinking we need more and more we keep feeling deprived we keep accumulating and because we don't understand our relatedness with so many others because we don't understand relationship properly we are not able to have fulfillment in our relationships so we are unhappy so you can see if you are lacking this right understanding and relationship with human beings now the outcome of that would be mutual unhappiness because if i am unhappy i will spread unhappiness to others similarly if my focus is on physical facility but i don't know how much i need and i keep thinking i don't have enough i will never feel prosperous and because i don't feel prosperous i will try to snatch from 
others from nature so i will not only be feeling deprived but i will also deprive others of their physical facility and i am also not able to take care of nature so this transformation when it happens how it will happen we'll get into that in a little bit so in this transformation when we move from this inhuman consciousness to human consciousness now we are paying attention to all three certainly all three are important not to say that physical facility is to be ignored and is not at all important it is very much so all three are required but how we are going to prioritize what is the priority that we give to it that will be that our first priority will be for right understanding within the self with this right understanding in the self second priority would be our relationships so we when we have understanding we do understand the relationships and with that we can have mutual happiness in the relationship fulfillment in the relationship and we can also take care of our need for physical facility because we can identify the need properly and take care of that need ensure that need for ourselves so that we can be prosperous and when we feel prosperous we share with others so we help or we look at enriching others also so this is the goal this is the goal of education sanskar what we are trying to do and we talked up to this yesterday and there was an assignment we spoke of yesterday how many of us were able to do that assignment if you can uh, just mention in the chat you can just write yes or no for that assignment our assignment was that we had to note down the times during the day yesterday when we felt unhappy or sad or low and try to see what was the cause for our unhappiness at each time that we felt like this was the cause due to a lack of understanding a lack of fulfillment in the relationship somebody said something we felt unhappy somebody didn't pay attention to what i was saying they we felt unhappy or it was a lack of physical facility something that some object i did not have enough of and therefore i felt unhappy and the second part of this was to look at all the physical facility that we have in our homes our possessions our wealth our clothes our furniture whatever we have in the house and see how many of these seem to be related to our needs and how many to our wants how many we actually need based on you know how now we can see physical facility is required for the body so how much was actually needed and how much was a part of our wants and we were to write down this these observations if we do these um, assignments very sincerely it will help in our exploration to go deeper in the exploration very quickly so um, i don't have um, yeah many of you are saying there are yeses and nos for the assignments so somebody is saying half done uh, only one okay so maybe if somebody would like to share their observations and um, let us know what their 
reflections for good morning didi namaskar namaste uh didi the first question like first observation like whole day uh, any time if i felt unhappy sad or down uh for this i i just observed two things whole day uh like whole day i was quite happy it was not like um, i was down but one time when i was uh, watching a, a family drama kind of thing so i cried because of the you know over sensitive love affection they have shown towards family so mm -hmm. i don't think it was uh, due to physical facilities or lack of understanding and right understanding or whatever the cause they have they have given uh, according to me it was like a emotional connection second observation was when uh, we have emotional connection uh, what do you mean by that try to look at it as something that um, relation it was a relation um i would say you know we see some similarity perhaps yeah true true, true. isn't it so yeah. then it could be relationships okay okay but i would leave it open if we are not sure we can reflect no, on it i just want to know see i am not able to uh, you know see it in a very minute way but yes i want a kind of mentorship and guide to see it in a clear clear vision yeah. so i have noted down uh, whatever yeah. happened my second yeah. observation we uh, can uh, i can let, me, let me just yeah. uh, uh, comment on this and then we'll go to the second part so uh, see sometimes what happens is there are many thoughts going on within us mm -hmm. many emotions may be there uh, which are bothersome mm -hmm. so we kind of put it you know how in the kitchen you put things on the back burner that we look at it later right right so we put it somewhere in the back within us and we think we'll sort it out later uh -huh. but if we don't sort it out then it may come up again and again in various forms uh -huh. so somebody says something and my thoughts go back to that time when somebody else did a similar thing to me uh -huh. i feel and if i have not resolved it that may lead to a similar emotion again or if i am very very involved with that thing i identify with it you'll notice that you know if you are watching something until and unless you feel a part of it or you are totally immersed or involved in it you may not feel that emotion at all absolutely true yeah so reflect on it and maybe you know at some point it may be that there was something within us that caused us some pain or some similarity we could see in ourselves there in that situation and therefore we had that kind of a reaction but um this is you know just the beginning part we are just seeing we are starting this but as we do our exercises exercise yeah. it will become more clear about you know how we are going about it and how to look within yeah okay 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 dikhi. yeah and okay. your second observation yeah my second observation yesterday uh, my whole family went to purchase few things for uh, our home which is required mm -hmm. so we, my younger daughter she is quite sensitive and she doesn't open up easily so she she bought two cheese pastas packet and she showed me and kept it in the trolley mm -hmm. so i told ki why two you can take one for you know satisfy your taste and everything and she remarked back that whenever i you you tell me to open up and express your views whenever i express myself then you you know try to uh, say no to my demand i feel bad i say <laughs> i support i mean maybe i am not at the right position to make her understand or she is not at the right um, you know level to understand what is the purpose of physical facility although we have discussed in the family 
but it was like a information maybe for me also and maybe for my daughter also mm-hmm. yeah i'm i i i just thought ki see it's not a kind of food which going to give nutrient and everything but for my daughter maybe it's like uh it's like the love bar which i should get from my mother uh, that i'm not getting so that was going down so i just want to know what exactly was the situation why i felt bad although she immediately came back and hugged me and said mama sorry i should have not reacted in that way but you know i i just failed to understand where i was lacking was it i am lacking of right understanding or uh, something else or some yeah. religion yeah yeah see a lot of times we we look at things from our perspective Mm-hmm. but we may not be seeing the others perspective so yes. we have been through this and like you said you know some of it may have we may have imbibed some of it may be just as information and with that you know whatever we see as significant for us we may still be taking more than we need of what is what we consider important according to our sanskars according to our tastes according to our likes and dislikes isn't it mm-hmm. the same thing when somebody else does because of that particular you know uh, their focus may be different their likes and li- dislikes are different from mine so when they do the same thing with their likes we notice it as something unimportant but we may not have been able to see what is unimportant that we may also have been taking more of exactly you see what i'm trying to say exactly so but the child will notice that isn't it true, so the true, child true. feels disturbed mm mm-hmm. that i am being forced to do something i really like this this is you know also we have to see that for the child whatever the desire is at that moment you know we are what we are doing is the child has put out or you know acted upon that desire at that time what we have done is we have tried to stop that desire from going through isn't mm-hmm. it yeah true now that is always disturbing for you mm-hmm. also you'll be able to see something that you think you want and yeah. you want to get that desire but somebody stops you now you will be resentful but at that those at such moments we can ask them to refer to their natural acceptance and leave the decision to them don't try to force them to change or try to impose but rather put as a proposal and leave it for them to explore and see you will find that 99 percent of the time they will opt for the right option so another way of doing this could have been that we can say that you know it will not be so good for the health of your body uh, you know but you can see it's up to you because everything these kind of things have their own side effects on the body and we can leave it at that now but it's okay if you want to have for you know you like it it's your choice and allow the child that freedom to choose i can tell you that even children as small as 2 3 years old they make the right choice it is just that we feel that they are too small so we don't give them the choice but if we give them the choice we find that they are able to make that choice because this natural acceptance you know wanting to nurture the body this is very strong if you ask the person do you want to nurture or harm it is very clear that answer it is just that we don't often refer to it mm-hmm. can you see the difference so one is to just say no right and the other is to leave as a proposal and say you decide 
exactly. Yeah, I got answer. Thank you, thank you, Bibi. And uh, the second question, which was like, check out the physical facility. I got mm -hmm. the answer because you know, when I, when I see most of the things in my home is for fulfilling the need. Although there were some, there are some facilities like clothes and footwear and food item, mm -hmm. uh, which are due to wants. So mm -hmm. this uh, this uh, this observation is giving me the answer of the problem which I had with my daughter because she also can see that there are few things which are uh, you know due to wants that is not actually due to need. So now now I got the you know correct clarity, more clarity in the in the incident whatever happened yesterday. Yeah, this is why we. Uh, we try to keep our focus first on improving our competence rather than trying to help the other because in that helping the other sometimes we end up imposing on the other or trying to make the other change and that leads to resentment in the other so that very often will not work true true absolutely mm -hmm. Nice, very nice we are sharing and this uh, assignment was meant for us to see that our need is somewhere else, isn't it? Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we find that when we are unhappy, we are unresolved, our actual requirement was for something else. It's It will usually not be physical facility. It will be some lack of understanding or very often we might find in our relationships some sourness that is leading to the unhappiness. Like you just mentioned, you know. This right, episode right. That happened with you. <laughs> so the need is there. That is the need of the self that we are wanting to, you know, satisfy. But we try to get it through physical facility by getting more physical facility. And we see that those are not linked to our needs, actually. Those are our wants. Those are our desires, which very often may not be in line with what actually we needed, isn't it? True, true, absolutely, Didi. And you know what? What I can see then the differentiate bit the you know hairline difference between need and want. I can see in my or others in my family, but for me, I try to or I may not be able to see it more clearly. I have to you know demarked it for myself first, and then. Uh, leave it for leave it uh, leave the option of choosing or you know finding out where their needs and wants are. Yes. So thank you, thank you, baby. thank you so much. Thank you. We'll take one more um, observation and then we'll go to the next. Um, go further in the topic. All right. Namaste, Madamji. Namaste. Uh, yes, uh, yesterday as per the home, uh, the assignment as it was given, mm -hmm. so I was able to complete. So about happiness and unhappiness, uh, I observed that yes, due to right and uh, lack of right understanding, I felt sometimes low. This was my first observation. Uh, Why do you say that? Any particular that episode, if you can just relate one in example. Uh, Ma'am, actually, um, two, three months uh, before I uh, lost my mommy, and I'm, uh, as I yesterday also uh, said that, yes, these things has been taught by parents as well. The fact, yes, this body is uh, different and self is uh, different from the body. Uh, body I mean, uh, goes, uh, but self, it remains, it exists. So that's what theory is good, but um, practicality, true. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's the reason. And mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to, as the focus is on coexistence in this morning session, so I wanted to um, make myself firm on this so that I can come out of this feeling of 
loneliness and unhappiness mm-hmm. uh that's the thing and mm-hmm. uh, uh, next thing is physical facil- uh, facility whether needs or on wants mm-hmm. uh yes so maximum it was about the needs but yes i remember um during covid situation somewhere i was arguing with my parents like yes we need to keep the uh, groceries in excess more than which we uh, require but then they were able to explain me uh, no this is that would be more than enough for us even though if it is a covid situation we can understand and it is requirement for others also so let's not keep it in excess and from childhood yes i got the learning the basic needs or the requirements facility which will make myself my health comfortable only those things we can keep it excess or more than requirement let's not keep it so yes i understood that i was able to uh, an- analyze that yes uh, things are based on the needs only that was the situation where i argued much okay let's keep it more this was my observation yeah and uh, i have a question on this current slide means last um, uhv also i was having question but i was not able to ask so it's a short question can i ask now madam yes please ma'am there are three blocks right understanding relation prosperity so right understanding is there but in hindi it is always written samajh mm-hmm. why it is not written sahi samajh oh okay. you can put sahi samajh that's okay <laughs> acha theek hai so it's okay okay ma'am theek hai yeah that See, was the words answer. are not so important to the reality that we are trying to talk of that is more significant than the words acha yes ma'am yeah thank you so thank just you. i want to mention one thing when uh, there is loneliness or sadness because of the loss of a loved one hmm? mm-hmm. if you notice you know why do we grieve or why do we feel for the loss of a loved one generally there might be two reasons one might be one of two reasons or both one might be that now that person is not there for me hmm? meaning that person was there and i could uh, talk to them could uh, you know spend time with them enjoy with them now that person is not there hmm? that you agree yes yes ma'am now we cannot see physically them yeah so there also if i am you know filled with the right feeling and of course if i understand the nature of the human being that the self is continuous and the you know, body perishes then i don't necessarily grieve that because while the person was there we had probably you know some timing sometimes that we could relate to each other and we had good feelings for one another there might have been other times when we had arguments and so on so what we are focusing on is up to us isn't it what i think yes so no. when it keeps coming up somewhere it could be that i am lacking the right feeling within myself so there is a void in me and i am trying to satisfy that void through somebody that i feel you know is there for me now that person is not there for me now i don't get that feeling from that person that could be one reason i'm just i'm not saying personally for you i'm just saying in general yes. so we can explore into that is that one possibility the other possibility often is that perhaps i did not do enough some regret 
which makes us sad that now that person is not there i was not able to do this such and such thing with the person i was not able to say such and such thing i was not able to do enough or whatever it may be some regret for something that was not done very often it is one of these two of course with understanding we can see that you know as our understanding grows we can also see that the self is there and we can also look at the good times that we spent together and you know um, understand that this is a process this is how it is and so the body perishes and the self continues the self was there in space earlier the self is still there in space even now and our whole outlook may be a little bit different so i just wanted to mention that because sometimes we go into deep grief and we are we find it difficult to come out of it but if we see the reason behind it it may give little clarity about you know what we are grieving and it may make sense now to focus on the good memories and also while the people who are there around us who are still with us what can i do to have fulfilling relationships with them enjoy the moments with them now that can be our focus so Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm taking honest efforts towards this. I'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I think we can go forward. Uh, there are a couple more hands raised, but in the interest of time, we'll go to the next slide. Yeah. So basically, this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to move from that lower diagram. on the lower left corner where you can see physical facility is predominantly our focus and right understanding and that block of relationship are kind of empty we are not really looking at those so what happens there is there is unhappiness within us we are unhappy we are making others unhappy and we feel deprived and so we deprive others also this is what we were referring to as animal consciousness or in human consciousness or you can also refer to it as the deluded self because after all all these uh, you know even when we look at prosperity physical facility for prosperity all that is happening within the self it is my interpretation of my requirement of physical facility so this is about the self so a deluded self is one which does not have the right understanding so when the right understanding is not there and you don't understand the relationship then this is largely the result but if we can move towards this transformation to what is being referred to as the pure self or the true self or human consciousness then we will focus on all three see that our basic desire our root desire is for happiness and prosperity in continuity and for that what i need to do is to have this priority within me keep right understanding in the self as top priority right feeling in relationship as second priority and requiring you know how much physical facility is required to be able to see that and to fulfill that that is the third priority then there can be mutual happiness and mutual prosperity happiness in me sharing it leading to happiness in the other prosperity feeling of prosperity in me sharing with others helping to enrich and um, 
you know, helping in the prosperity of others, including nature. Yeah. Next slide. So ultimately, we start started from the self. It is in the self that we try to understand. This transformation we were talking of in the last slide was within the self, isn't it? That our focus shifts from only physical facility to prioritizing right understanding as first, relationship as second, and physical facility as third. And when we do that within the self, this you know, as we as this process goes through education, you know, into uh, more and more uh, it spreads. So there is a tipping point in society where society also reflects this. Society also reflects human consciousness. And ultimately with that, you can see that this is not just important or required for me or you or people from engineering colleges in AICTE or school children or the elderly or, you know, my town. It is required for everybody. So whether it be India, whether it be abroad, so globally, everybody, this is a need for all of us. And ultimately, what can um, come about is an undivided society with the fulfillment of the human goal, what is being referred to as the universal human order. So again, these are very big words, and it may seem like something very out of reach. But um, one can reflect on this and see is it something desirable? Is it something worth doing? Is it something that we want? So is it desirable? You can put in the chat, yes or no for this. Or is it that it doesn't matter to us? Yes. Can you put in the chat? Is this something that we see as desirable? Yeah, nice. So I don't think any of us have mentioned a no here. We can all see that because we do have a natural acceptance for this, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. Yes. So we can go to the next slide. So in this process, the transformations that we need to see or what is expected, what needs to happen for having that undivided society. One is the personal transformation, the transformation in our own consciousness, in ourself. The other is the societal transformation, the transformation in the society. So you'll notice that here also, the focus is, first, we work on ourselves, improve our own competence, see the changes, not just the changes, but the transformation. A transformation would be a change that doesn't keep going back. So if I really understand something, if I have understood something, say if I have understood trust, completely, then I will not get annoyed, angry, upset at any moment. I will never have doubt on intention. That is transformation. If it is a change, then there might still be some condition attached to it. Sometimes I don't get upset, but other times I might. So this transformation needs to happen at two levels. Firstly, within the self, within myself, working on myself, and secondly, in the society. So here also, 
we are talking about personal transformation working together as a team working together means now it's like a larger unit and then with that team trying to bring about societal development societal transformation so this is uh, you know how it needs to go if we can go to the next slide and what this means in the self right this transformation in the self what this really means is you can see in the lower left side the diagram essentially it is showing that within the self there are some activities that we um may be making use of so we have in the lower block we'll do this in more detail in the next lecture but for now you know these lower activities within us what you see as the yellow colored activities and what we are just referring to as b2 this b2 block is something that might be active in us that we are using on a regular basis our likes dislikes um yeah i'll just uh, we'll go through this in more detail as we go further here i'll just mention is one, so one thing that in this lower figure you will see that some part of it the lower part you can see the yellow part is opened up the part above that is still gray right so this lower part that is active within us these are the lower activities of the self when we say transformation we are trying to move from this state to the state which you can see in the upper right corner where all the activities in the self are there so we have awakened to these other activities we are aware of these higher activities what we refer to as the b1 block and with that we have the right understanding we are able to understand the relationships we are able to see the need so all those things that we were talking about our need for right understanding our need for relationships our feeling of prosperity about the physical facility we have where is all that that is in the self so here in the lower left side is the deluded self with only the lower activities in the self active in the right upper side is the transformed self the pure self is also there where now the lower activities come in line with the higher activities earlier we were not aware of the higher activities we don't refer to the natural acceptance at all now we start referring to the natural acceptance we start unfolding the the higher activities become we become aware to them more and more and that leads to that transformation ultimately trickling down to our behavior also so this may seem like a lot uh, but it will become more clear when we uh, discuss the content a little further when we go on to the next chapter and so on meanwhile um, if there are any questions on this we'll take it good morning whether my voice has been audible yes you are audible ma'am uh, i would like to ask one question from a slide number 1 which you have started in the morning today slide 1 okay what is your question ma'am it was related uh, to the right understanding with the self in the I self think, huh so how we can uh, you know it's a tough time for us to make the student to realize and then to make them to understand that what is right and what is wrong how we can uh, follow that model how we can follow them 
uh, the path to tell them that uh, this is right this is wrong yeah so again i'll draw your attention to what we are saying is to start working on ourselves first of course to build our own competence the second thing that we were we have been saying um is that the as you know when we talk of the process it will become more apparent we are referring to the natural acceptance so we don't have to tell them what is right what is wrong everybody has the faculty of natural acceptance within them we just have to leave the proposal with them and let them try to explore it within themselves they will be able to decide what is right what is wrong for them based on the natural acceptance and we a lot of times it may seem that you know they may not be capable of but this what when we were having that discussion uh, in the sharing you will realize that you know when you talk to children and put it as proposal even very small children i have noticed up to 2 years and above they are able to make the right choices provided of course you give the proposal in a language they can understand so if the small child and you you know use very big words the child may not understand what you are talking about but if you put the proposal in a way that you know a small child can understand then the child also is able to make the right choice so um not that we have to tell them this is right this is wrong we just give them the proposal yeah uh, but ma'am we are seeing the theory of the de- delude self which mm-hmm. means that uh, believing things that are not real or true no 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 deluded self just means that within the self i have not awakened to the higher activities within myself that is a deluded self a deluded self just means a self that lacks understanding okay okay because the ma- dictionary meaning was different it was telling us that uh, which is not true which that we have to believe rely on yeah exactly so deluded self is see when i have understanding what is understanding i am able to see everything the way it is i i am able to see the reality the way it is reality is the same for all isn't it the reality is the same for all the truth is the same but many of us see it as something different based yes. on our own preconditionings isn't it yes ma'am with our own so preconditioning and pre-thought uh-huh. yes ha uh-huh. so when we lack understanding and we go by assumptions we are seeing the reality as something it may not be isn't it so that is why deluded we are not seeing it the way it actually is but we are seeing it as something else so uh, shall we frame that thing beforehand getting into the class and then we uh, request the student into come into that particular frame and rethink in that way no 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 see this is for our own understanding when we are going to teach this we will not start from here isn't it we will start from the introductory there is a workshop for students we will start with that okay. so slowly they it will build because for the student what is significant if you notice in the student workshop the focus is on things that may be important for the student you know okay what they are choosing as their career and all those kind uh, of yes, yes. So that's totally right. yes yes yeah. their focus will be different yes ma'am yes yes okay ha huh, thank you ma'am thank you thank you maybe we'll take one more question before we go further uh, good morning ma'am uh, actually uh, when we see the um, uh, the ancient scriptures everywhere the bird self i think it is uh, uh, ref, uh, that is the meaning of self is different that is um, self is something uh, which is all pervasive or some or the the which includes everything but we, here we are referring that self the word self, and it is very common in uh, in um, our ancient scriptures 
but the, here i think it is referred to um, uh, uh, it is limited to an individual isn't it ma'am an individual yeah. and its control and no other uh, uh, connection between other uh, entities uh, uh, the between uh, the control between other entities are not, uh, not included in this is not included in this self here so there is a, a confusion i'll just mention so, what what we are saying hmm. you can see that see uh, many times many things may be mentioned and we also may be interpreting it little bit differently hmm. isn't it so here our focus is to try to see that reality within ourselves so by no means should you believe whatever we are just saying otherwise it will be one more preconditioning isn't it that this uh this scripture says this uhv says this something else says this something else says that how do you decide what is real mm -hmm. what is true isn't it because truth is the same truth is one our interpretation may be little bit different mm -hmm. have you heard of you know uh, in the elephant somebody tried to yes, yes. Uh -huh. when somebody mm. showed, yeah, yes. seen mm. from the front just for everybody i'll just mention it quickly somebody sees it from the front and describes it a certain way and the person who's looking at it from the side describes it a different way and says no no you are wrong it is like this and the person who is standing behind the elephant sees the back and says you both are wrong it is actually like this so it could be something like this how do you decide what is it what is the truth what is real so to put all the questions to rest we are going to try to look at it directly within ourselves that is what we want to do with the exercises and all of that ultimately that is what the goal is to try to see the reality the way it is the void of our preconditionings whatever we think you know uh based on our conditionings so beyond that to be able to look at the reality exactly the way it is so in order to do this we are going through this process and ultimately what we are saying is that you know, there is space and there are units in this existence in the units there are two types of units the consciousness units and the material units and when here now when we are referring to the self we are talking about that consciousness unit right this self the consciousness unit it associates with a material unit the body and comes together as a human being so right now what we are talking about is the consciousness unit and these activities that need to open up within us to be able to see the truth the way it is we have to go up to the highest activity within the self that is the activity of realization so that is where our focus is that is where we want to go so when we are referring to the natural acceptance right now the higher activities we may not be able to see them as we keep referring to the natural acceptance this natural acceptance is from the highest point within us the highest activity within the activity of realization from that point we we refer to that that is what is when we are saying pure observer natural acceptance we are referring to that and as we keep referring and as we keep going with the exploration slowly we are able to open up or gain access to these higher activities within us ultimately we are able to see directly so i would say you know what exactly it is let's keep it open don't close that issue right now don't believe and don't disbelieve also okay yeah. Yeah, madam uh, actually as uh, um, i have recently come across uh, great words usually we see uh, many things like that in uh, so uh, one says um, <clears throat> self is always permanent 
uh, mind only changes but what we see in the um, uhv is self or um, evolves uh, self evolution wait, happens wait wait, so wait that wait. is the confusion again what the self same word self is used um, um, uh, they are within telling the self, within the self what is being said is there are two parts what we are referring to as b1 and b2 they are inseparable parts but they are both in the self this is what i was trying to refer to as we go further in the next lecture there will be more clarity about this the b2 part the lower block which is, you see as the yellow part right this is sometimes referred to as the mind some people referred even you know only to the lowest activity the expectation part the likes and dislikes some people refer to that as mind huh? in the scriptures also some people refer to this whole yellow block as the mind so here you will keep finding changes you are thinking one thing next moment you are thinking something else right now you are feeling sad next moment uh, somebody comes cheers you up you are feeling happy here you will keep seeing changes as you go up in the higher activities within the self as these this purple block starts opening up as you move up to the highest activity you will find some um, that that part there is no change so that is why we can refer to the natural acceptance this is the point you know from where we are referring which is the highest activity in the self that is why when you ask these questions of your natural acceptance every person is able to give that same answer because there there is stability there is no change it was the same you know many many years ago it is the same now and it will continue to be the same can you uh, relate to that what i am saying mm, yes ma'am and also when uh, in, in the slides it is seen desire thought expectation and some dots are there what are the what is the meaning of those dots ma'am mind activities self activities this year thought expectation uh, and that ellipsis is there that there are some other activities also are there like that i didn't understand your question actually uh, in the uh, self activities um, uh, so self and body when we explain that slide self okay, and body is. activities uh, so yeah. as part What of self mean? activities Uh, oh. it is written desire thought expectation and then some dot dot uh, etc so no, this means no. like you see it's not just one desire one thought one expectation this is a continuum isn't it oh ho, if ho. you notice within yourself this is happening all the time it is mm -hmm. a continuum thing okay this is also an indicator that the self has the continuity it seems to indicate that even though we may not be able to see the continuity in the self we may be able to see this that we are constantly thinking something we are constantly desiring something isn't it mm -hmm. so, uh, we are not considering any other other uh, um, so the self does not have any other operation activity other than this desire thought and expectation see right now we are just talking of desire thought expectation because those are the activities that uh, we have influences uh, become aware of uh, but there are more activities within the self that we are uh, not yet aware of that is what we are in the process uh, of trying to uh, uh, yeah ah uh, yes ma'am okay, okay. <laughs> so um, we have run out of time with that question so i'll have to stop here we'll reflect on this and i will put uh, um, some assignment in the group also but essentially we have to look at this that this transformation has to happen from the lower activities to be being able to see the reality as it is by unfolding the higher activities within us